Hey guys, what's up? Ben here. Today I'm going to show you how to turn the $6 RF outlet into a Wi-Fi capable Internet of Things smart home dream device. Let's get to it. So first, let me tell you a little bit more about what these outlets actually are. These are eTech City 433 MHz RF outlets. I got five of these outlets with two RF remotes for about $30 on Amazon. By themselves, these outlets are actually quite useful. You can plug them into any outlet you have around your house and using the included remote, turn them on or off remotely. However, when you combine them with an RF transmitter and an RF receiver in a Raspberry Pi, they become smart. Let me show you how. First, you'll need to acquire a few female-to-female -female header wires and a 433 MHz RF transmitter and receiver. I prefer using the slightly more expensive Super Heterodyne RF variety, as their performance is much better than their cheaper generic RF counterparts. You should be able to get a transmitter and receiver set for about $10. Links for these will be in the description below. To connect your transmitter to the Pi, first connect the 5 volt power pin, then connect the ground pin. The transmitter should be labeled on the back as to which each header pin is. Then we'll connect the signal wire to GPIO 17. Next, we'll repeat this process with the transmitter. We'll connect its 5 volt pin to any of the 5 volt pins on the Pi. And we'll connect its ground pin to any of the available ground pins on the Pi. We'll connect its signal pin to GPIO 27. The wiring shown here should be the same for any Model B Raspberry Pi. As a note, the signal pins on this Super Heterodyne RF receiver can be a little funky. I use the ground and the 5 volts on the same side as the data pin. I also connect an additional header wire to the antenna pin on the transmitter and receiver to act as an antenna. If you haven't done this yet, you'll need to pair each outlet with the corresponding button on the remote. To do this, press and hold the button on the side of the outlet until the light starts blinking. Then, press and hold the button you want to pair the outlet to on the remote until the light stops blinking on the outlet. Now, you should be able to control the outlet with the remote. You could pair multiple outlets to the same button, but I prefer to have each outlet on its own set of buttons so I can control each outlet individually. Next, we need to configure Home Assistant to work with these RF outlets. If you don't know what Home Assistant is, it's awesome free home automation software that runs on the Raspberry Pi. It has a great user interface that lets you control your devices when you're home or away, and allows you to create automations based off of, well, anything. Thanks to the new RF component, we can easily add our outlets to Home Assistant. First, we'll need to acquire the RF code that the included remote transmits to the outlets. Once recorded, a Home Assistant can retransmit this code to turn the outlets on or off without needing the remote. This is a one-time setup that we won't need to do again once we know the codes. Essentially, this is the RF version of training an all-in-one remote. Open your web browser and navigate to the Home Assistant components page. Click on the Raspberry Pi RF switch component. There's some great additional documentation if you click on the RPI-RF module link. To capture the RF codes from the remote, First, open PuTTY and log into your Pi. Type sudo apt git update. And then type sudo apt git upgrade. Next, if you don't have pip installed, type sudo apt git install python3 pip. Then, to install the RPI-RF Python module, type sudo pip3 install rpi-rf. Next, we need to create a Python script that records the RF codes. Create a new Python file by typing sudo nano rfrx.py and hitting enter. Next, copy the script that's linked in the description below. and paste it into PuTTY by right-clicking. 
Save the script by pressing Control X and then Y and then Enter. Now you should be able to run the script. To run the script, type sudo python3 rfrx.py and press Enter. Now the script will keep running until you stop it by hitting Control C. While the script is running, hold the remote close to your Pi and press and hold a button on your remote. The RF code should appear. Record the RF code for each on and off button. These codes will correspond to the RF outlet you programmed to that button. Once you're sure you have the RF code for each button, you can stop the script by pressing Control C and then close PuTTY. To add the codes to Home Assistant, go back to the components page and copy the sample code. Paste this into your Home Assistant configuration. For these RF outlets, I like to add the protocol in pulse length. You can do that by just adding it directly under the outlet name. You can then replicate this for as many RF outlets as you have. You can change the outlet name, and then change the corresponding RF code for that outlet. Do this for each of your outlets, hit save, restart Home Assistant, and you're good to go. Alexa, turn on the outlet. Okay. Alexa, turn off the outlet. Okay. So that's it. Easy peasy. I think these RF outlets are one of the best values right now in the home automation game. At six to eight dollars a piece, it makes spending forty dollars on a Wi-Fi RF outlet seem kind of crazy. An ice cream truck. And because these outlets are tied into Home Assistant, you can control them from anywhere in the world, or from your phone, or from Alexa, and even automate with them. P.S. As a quick bonus, if you have any other 433 MHz RF remotes, like for a ceiling fan or an air conditioning unit, you might be able to duplicate these steps and control them with Home Assistant as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, or on my website, or in the Home Assistant community, or whatever suits you. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and let me know if you get this working for you. And as always, happy automating. Cheers. Bye.